we're gonna do Rain Mr. Jigs at two o'clock. We're gonna do in you you at three o'clock. Okay. And you at four. Okay. That's with Matt and Ben and all those guys. Okay. How's it going, guys? Okay. What's going on? Glad you're here? Yup. I mean, now that we've met Ben, the guy's better looking and more charming in person. He's all that in a bag of chips, but he tongue kissed my mom. I, she was a character, was man. She was flirting with me really he's, hard. He's just pulling around. He's got his arm around and he's making like the. Like she sticks her tongue out and almost tongues it. She was like. When we start talking about this, then uh, then I'll probably have a panic attack right in the middle of it all and uh, screw something up. I want to win. You know, I hope I'm not sounding like too much like Rocky here or something like that. But that, you know, I want to win. I, I haven't been able to eat. I've been so anxious. I've been like force feeding myself. My, like, it's it's not good. It's not good. I really wish it, this is something that I can just, you know, enjoy more. After just 40 days of accepting submissions, Project Greenlight became the largest screenplay competition in film history. Over 10,000 contestants from all across America entered hoping for a chance to direct a feature film based on their script. Chris Moore, Ben Affleck, and Matt Damon will produce it. Miramax Films is offering a $1 million budget and will release the movie in theaters. The contestants evaluated each other over the internet and produced a list of 250 finalists. Now, entertainment industry professionals must select a winner. This is Project Greenlight. Tonight is the green light. I would love to be there. I hope this project does what it is meant to, that it gives new writers a chance, breathes new life into stale old Hollywood, doesn't become a competition. Really, I wish I were there. Love, Mommy. Isn't that sweet? So you want to practice a couple of your questions? You know, like, uh... How about, ask me how I'm feeling. I'll, I'll come up with a good answer. Hey, loosen me up. What's up, guys? Hey, everybody. Hey! hey. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How are you, Matt? There he is. Hello. How, How are you guys doing? Hey, nice to Some questions about the script if we want to get right into it. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, nuts and advice. <laughs> the Kevin Klein movie. Yeah. It comes out in and out. It comes out that he is gay. But in this movie, Rob is straight. Yes. What accounts for him having that relationship? At the end of your script, I'm confused what happens. Can you take me through it? Into my script, uh the having a father who loses two children. I, what's the span of time in the story? It's about five weeks or so. I mean, loses two children within five weeks, and I think some things just didn't play as realistically in others in the script. I think it's too unbelievable. Right, and he and, cannot. Re he, he, no, no matter what justification, they can't rebound like that. There's no way. When he's there, does he feel like he fell in love with this guy? Was it a sexual thing? Was it a, a, a confused emotional attachment that evolved into we, something? We haven't talked about this. We I don't know what our take is. It, so you can give your take and I give mine. All right, let's hope they match. <laughs> the main criticism with the script, really, is um, is it too precocious? Is it uh -huh. putting adult words in the mouths of children? It was definitely one of my criticisms that, that, that some of the dialogue did feel pat and did yeah. feel like speaking the subtext rather than... Right not to be rude, but it somewhat annoys me when I get that criticism that people say, you know what, kids don't talk like that. And I disagree. It's one thing you, if it's going to make something ambiguous, but in your take on this movie is that it should ultimately be clear. And I think that in this movie, a lot's left unsaid. Mm -hmm. I'll say that, you know, I like ambiguities in film. <laughs> if you were compelled to enter into a one-month relationship with a guy, then in fact, you know, which is, which is why... It's a long time to... to go if you're not really gay. Right. He just happened to be, he tells, who Why did he tells he get the, the story. I, 
Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm trying to help. I'm trying to help us. I know how to do this, but thank you. Sorry, I don't want it to be sappy. It's a fine line between being an after-school special, a Sunday night movie, or being a feature film. One of you would deal more with the camera, and one of you deal more with the actors, like the Joel and Ethan Cohen of it all. That's something that we had to do uh, out of necessity because our lead actress is his ex-girlfriend, and she got so annoyed every time he criticized You're her. You're kidding. Maybe you shouldn't cast your ex-girlfriend. Yeah, we don't think so. <laughs> Live and learn. Bad idea. Would you be willing to rewrite it? Would you be willing to like... Oh. Yeah, and, and you know what? And, I, do, and do you want to, rather? I mean, yeah. it would be in a willingness. I mean, you're to allowed to have an opinion, but there's going to come a point, no matter how great it goes, when everybody's going to go, we hate it, we want to go home, this sucks, this director's knew what he's doing. How does that make you feel? Does that intimidate you? Do you feel like you... Not really. Unfortunately, we're sort of out of time. All right. I'm sorry, that's my job, unfortunately, is I'm the ass. You're the bad cop. Yeah, exactly. Someone has to be. Thank you guys. Congratulations. Thank you. Great to see you. Thanks. Take care, bro. Nice. Shoot this, I think I just, I'm, I'm a little bit not on my element. You're not on your game? I'm not on my game because I'm tired and exhausted and I can't thought, think clearly. I thought you did fine. I don't know, kid. This is, now it's the Now you're sick again? <laughs> you didn't sign your soul away, are you? Yeah, that's good. That comes, that comes later. That comes later. The strangest part is, is that we, we were surrounded by a lot of smart people in our lives, mm -hmm. and all these smart people really never gave us the simple points that they just gave us in five minutes that could have made this trip a lot better. And it's a very nebulous thing, directing, you know? It's kind of, what exactly does a director do? How exactly do they do the job? Everybody does it differently. So it's really hard to look at it and say, just in terms of oh, at, on the merits of being a director, this person or that person's better. We know what time we're going to get and out of here. An hour, an hour, an hour, an hour, one hour. Sort of wish we could make three $300,000 movies. I believe his movie would work. Pete's. It would have Pete's work. And mm -hmm. I think the Jigs movie would work in their way. And I, there's no question in my mind that Brendan will make an interesting movie. Uh -huh. It may be a little cerebral and distant. You know what? I'm the boss, and I say jigs. <laughs> Meryl, who was, you know, arguably the most powerful person in the room, if you want to, you know, compare dicks, uh, you know, was, uh, was really behind jigs. Meryl's like, I like jigs. I do. I like jigs. Do you guys want to talk about Brendan a little bit? I think he'll make the best movie. He answered a lot of good questions, just the riskiest script, you know? I'm not wild about his script. I probably wouldn't watch that movie. Even if his screenplay is the least accessible of the three, um, I, I, I think it's the best. Um, I think he's the best director. Um, and to me, to me, that's it. If it is not executed perfectly, it could be nothing. All right, we'll, we'll do the do the secret balance. Let's do see. I want to just let me do secret balance. Do them so just to get just to get a straw poll. I can't vote. I don't know who I'm gonna vote for. Well, you, it's not binding, okay? So it's like, what do you think? Let's do one that's just the best movie, the movie you most want to work on, make. Like, if you were gonna pick a movie to work on, for all the criteria you usually use to make movies, okay? I wasn't sure which of the one was my favorite, and I don't think anyone else was. I wanted to get down to what do people like without other people's influence, without somebody else telling them vote for this, without being ashamed to raise their hand and be the only one who raises their hand. Uh, see, this, now this is just like Survivor. We're gonna put out somebody's torch, ready? I always wanted to do this. Speakeasy, Stolen Summer, Brandon, Jigs, we're over the map. Three, two, one. Pete. Three, three, one. It's gonna be a long night, settle in. <laughs> God, From a studio perspective, I would say, here, let's make Brendan's movie and let's make Mr. Jigs because we're making a movie that's commercial and we can, you know what I'm saying, we can offset any sort of risk that we have. And then Pete, Pete's the only loser and shit. Oh, God. That's really unfair to well, the it's process because like it should be the best director and it should be the best script. Um, Chris, hey, where are you coming you. down right now? Uh, I have to say, I'm, Jigs is out for me and I'm really torn. Oh, Chris, why don't you like Jigs? I don't dislike it, I, there, but... You'd like uh, it if it, somebody fucked a pie, I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> my, my biggest concern about it is I really worry about that kind of broad comedy. Mm -hmm. I worry about those guys. It's hard to do, it's hard to do right, it's hard to keep a tone right. The other problem I had was they didn't seem to think 
that this issue about the homosexuality needed to be as clear as we all did. The guys are obviously, you know, writing good, good at writing jokes, but they, it's a movie that hasn't been worked out yet. If that worries me thing. much, much more as a attempt to go out with a limited budget and a first time thing. And a, the thing I think that's easier about Pete's is that it's straightforward drum. You can just sit down and say, this is Pat dialogue. I we know, need to do I better know. dialogue and fix it. If you're looking at it that way, then the answer is not Jigs. At that point, Baron and Evans freeing Mr. Jiggs was removed sort of from the debate because there were such big script problems that they didn't agree with script problems and they didn't have any solutions to them and we felt that that was going to be very hard. It's nine o'clock. Son of a bitch, man. Let's go puke. <laughs> we have to go to bed one more time thinking about this. Right. I didn't think I'd be getting this nervous. The waiting is the hardest part. Say Pete is a fucking great guy, right? I mean, no doubt about it. Everyone was moved by his script. But when you hear him talk about how to shoot a movie what, versus Brendan, who's sitting there talking the way, the way I talk to the director that I normally talk to, you know, the, I recognized him as somebody who, you know, is a director. If Pete Jones walked into a room in any studio in town and had the meeting we just had with him, he would not get to make his movie. Pete, Pete may really come up with something good. Pete said he doesn't want to make an after-school special, which was one of our concerns yesterday. He doesn't want to make a Sunday night movie. But he did write one. What? He did write but one, he and he has read but you, you on, know, on But the you know site. something, but you know as well as I do, and again, I want to just play devil's <laughs> advocate, but you know as well as I do that there are lots of movies that you read that you wind up seeing the movies actually made, and you say, wow, that plays so much better. I think Pete nailing his movie is such a greater long shot than Brendan nailing his. With Brendan's, if it works, it's still, it's still probably inaccessible to, to some people. We'll find it just not moving. And if, and if, and if Pete's works, it's Stand By Me. You know, if it doesn't, it's, it's the after school special I did when I was 13. I would go with Brendan. Speak easy. I think that Brendan's movie is gonna be really hard to cast it. Oh, I gotta pull my vote back. I don't know yet. I gotta pull my, oh, pull my vote back. <laughs> It was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Like, I thought we were going to come in and I thought everyone was going to sit down and there was going to be one script that everyone really responded to and said, OK, this is it. This is the one we're going with. At Miramax, there's not, normally not that much of a fight over what we're going to make. What was great was watching the investment of all these people in this process, and Meryl and John, and, you know, they're greenlighting movies that are a lot more uh, expensive and a lot more risky for their company, and yet they were kind of right in there fighting tooth and nail kind of till the bitter end. And to see that kind of passion from everybody in the room was, um, was, was pretty cool. Great, so we're still flummoxed. That was something that we didn't anticipate. The only thing we had thought of was, oh, well, someone's going to get to make their music. This is going to be great, you know? And as we got to know everybody and got closer to people, um, it became really hard to say no. What about the sound, gentlemen? Is that a... Pete. Pete? You like Pete? Pete? He's the guy that will never get the chance unless you do it. We just make them wrestle for it. I, I have a date. Guys, I really think we should try and, and, and move something forward. OK, so not, that's not why, why, why don't we just that's take another show of hands, Chris? I, I do feel that Pete can do a really good job. And if he can get the performances out of the two kids that he got out of that kid, Mac, in his little short film, as fucked up as it looked, I would like to watch that movie. I like Pete's script you like a Pete's, lot better. You like Pete's story better. That, yeah, than right. Brennan. So my point is, if you if you include story, well, it was just directing writing, and, and directing, Schlerf would win. right, as filmmaking as a whole, right, right, then I would say it's about even because I think that there's Brennan is way ahead at the directing side, you know. I think Pete's way ahead on the story side, and I think the writing is somewhere in the middle. Since I think it's basically even on those three fronts, I then go to just personally, what would I rather work on? You know, and that a well-made movie whose story you don't find compelling or a potentially saccharine, predictable. <laughs> but you can always just be like, maybe it'll be stand by. Yeah, I mean, maybe in a movie you yeah. can just kind of go, could be great. No, because I can't think of what Speakeasy could be. I think it's a lot harder to execute Speakeasy great. Mm -hmm. It's easier to execute. You know what I mean? Let's say, let's say the threshold is execute them both well, okay, passively. You know, you know what? I would really like to talk to them because what I'd like to know is. Who worked on their films? How did they get them to work on their films? That's what I'd like to know. You're like the sexy school teacher. <laughs> you know that? You do. So you tell me. You take out that ruler and tell me. You give it to me. I, I'm bad. I'm a bad boy. 
Anyway, what were you saying? <laughs> Brandon Murphy. How are you? God almighty. We're still here, dude. We hit a point, we've been there, I don't know, four, six, some amount, ridiculous amount of hours. And we brought him down to meet him again and sort of give him another chance to argue for each other. We also brought him down because we were at a point we had no idea what to do, so we were doing anything. From your, in your own personal opinion, what do you think should be the, the criterion for who wins this contest? Something somewhat commercially viable. Uh, if it's too much of an art film, uh, uh, even for Miramax, I figure, you know, it's just it's going to turn a lot of people off. Um, a certain amount of charisma. Do you think your movie's an art film? Um, yeah, but it's kind of uh, blurring the line between art film and, uh, and commercially viable. Mm -hmm. What was being looked for in a winner was somebody who would deserve and would they live up to the fact that we gave them a break? And did they have enough passion to fight the battle? <laughs> the passion was something big that we were looking for. In your mind, when you got into this thing, what did you think was gonna be the basis for the decision making. It's such a subjective thing, there's no right answer. It's about making the best film. And, you know, I'm getting a little emotional and I shouldn't be getting emotional. It's but right, it's man. about, it's we, about- We've been here for yeah. six hours, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's about making the best film. And, you know, the HBO thing is great. I personally would love it, you know. They call me narcissistic or something, <laughs> but I enjoy that. That's not what it's about. It's about you guys screwing the studio system and saying, Let's make the best film. Market the film, fuck you, who cares? We're making the best film, we're putting out a million bucks, I don't have a million bucks, but studios have some money and a million dollar budget is not gonna crush them. So let's make the best film that we can make. And, you know, obviously I'm biased. I think my movie's the best film to make. I think my film probably wouldn't get made by a studio, by a big studio. You know, I think that Greenlight is the kind of project that I would make a film like this. And I'm not a Hollywood expert, so I don't know. I'm just going on a stereotype here. <laughs> I don't have any other questions after that answer. I mean, I was really bowled over when he walked out of the room. And when he did that, I really... In my heart, I knew, I knew he was, he was the guy. My dad thinks they play too much golf and they charge like assholes. <laughs> he's better writing than I remembered. He's articulate, he's fun, he's passionate. It's a very um, open story that people all over the country can appreciate. The guy had like a lot of heart when he came in here and if he like puts that into making that movie, I think he can make a good movie. I mean, I just feel like Rocky just walked in here and like, I think Harvey, if he was sitting in the room right now, Look, this is, this is a company that for, for more or less responds to passion in filmmakers, and I can't say you can discount what Pete was saying when he was sitting in here, and I think he would get behind it and do it. You know, if you're open to Pete, and you like Pete, and he likes Pete, and they, he likes Pete, and he likes Pete, then maybe you should go with Pete. Wake up. <laughs> I almost fell asleep there. Sorry, Jess. Yeah, no problem. Long night for us, man. Yeah. We're just so hard. What's your daughter's name? Molly. Molly, right, that's yeah. what I thought. Oh, that was it. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do it. All right. Pete, you won. <laughs> Congratulations. 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 Man. <laughs> Congratulations. We're excited for him because we we know that feeling and and there's nothing like it and and it's good to be around when someone's when someone's feeling it, you know. <laughs> that was the one moment of fun, and it's all hell from here on out. <laughs> Thank you. It was, you know, I kept calling it, it was the end game. You know, green light or bust. When you're chasing your dream, when do you call it quits? You know, how do you know that maybe next month isn't the month when something's gonna break for you. We did it. What? We won. What do you mean? They brought me down there and they just said. Is that serious? Yep. This is serious. <laughs> I'm not gonna be lying about this. Oh my God. You guys were really good. Yeah, you guys were really good. This was a great. Here. I gotta I, hand it to you, you know, like if you really talk things through, you do come up with a solution. 
I was in such a panic. I went down there, I'm like, they're gonna tell me that I didn't do it, but they really like me. <laughs> oh, oh God. I'm so proud of you. Ay, ay, ay. It's like now I just wanna go frickin' start getting ready. Are you so happy? Yeah, it just. Oh my God, wait a minute. What does that mean? It means that Our we gotta start life. shooting a movie. Oh my God. So they said, like, tomorrow there's gonna be some big announcement. I have no clue. got to be on the road at, at 2.45, so I'm going to try and hit both of them because we're going to pick up Ben at his house. Will I get it made? Whoa. What's up, guys? Hey, the bad news is that you guys didn't win the contest, okay. and I'm, I'm very sorry about that. Well, Brennan, you, you did an awesome job, and we just couldn't decide, and it wasn't like there was three dudes who wanted one person and three dudes who wanted the other. It was that everybody wanted both of them. It's not a problem. I mean, I, I think I learned a lot from, from sitting in on those meetings and talking to them. You guys were champions, and, uh, you know, hopefully you may have to sell hair on Friday, but by, you know, a month from Friday, you might not have to sell hair. And we have to remind ourselves constantly that this is not the be-all, end-all. I really do think this business is a battle of attrition, and if you're dedicated, sooner or later you will make it. The movie with you, I think you're going to be a real talented dude, and, uh, you know, I don't get these opportunities all the time in my career. Thank you so, so much. Thank you're, you're, you're a good man. That was hard. Those guys are so good. do is we try to figure out how to announce it and kind of do it and we thought that it'd be fun. Yeah, I know. We just, we thought that it would be fun. Oh, don't do it, little one. Don't do it, little one. So we think we'd do the announcement on Tonight Show. So we're going to take you to the Tonight Show. <laughs> oh, no pressure there, hey, Jake. Okay, I'm going to have you back in the dressing room. You'll come down and talk to him. And then I'm going to say, ba ba ba, and I'll kind of bullshit with Lana for a while. And then um, tell a few jokes. And he's going to say, oh, I'm talking about the exact green light. You know? and, uh, and then I'm going to. Uh, and then I say, yeah, you know, actually, we picked a winner, and uh, he's here. We're shooting the documentary and the whole thing. And he's going to go, whoa, why does he come out? And I say, hello. You know, and then. Uh, We'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll drag you uh, out. <laughs> <laughs> this is Jay Leno. Everyone watches. And while my fat face is going to be coming on, and I'm going to be getting a lot of phone calls from people I haven't talked to in a while, saying, holy shit, Pete Jones, what are you doing? I just want to figure out what's going to because it's hard to, sometimes it's like a little bit, oh, you get out there and it's, you know, but you seem to be fine. But we just want to figure out a couple of things to say, because I told him, look, you got to bring him out there. He'll be funny. You know, he's great. We hope he doesn't panic. <laughs> ah, that'd be good too. <laughs> you totally freeze up. I was kind of concerned that um, because it's a lot of like actors, professional actors, and comedians, and everybody, you know, um, get really, really nervous and kind of seize up, you know. And it is more nerve wracking than it looks. I hate the word surreal, but it pretty much covered how that whole night went. First guest, Oscar winning writer and a talented uh, actor. And he's here to tonight talk about a contest for screenwriters called Project Greenlight. Now, see, this is what I like. This is a guy who hasn't forgotten. He's gone back to help the new kids. We'll find out about it a little bit later. Please welcome Ben Affleck, ladies and gentlemen. New kid, I'm older than he is. <laughs> <laughs>
tell me about this uh, this, this, this project Gr Greenlight. <laughs> Announce the uh, the winner tomorrow, and we got like the actual winner. He's got his whole family out here, and they're all excited. I said I'm doing the Tonight Show, right, right. and they said, "Oh, can we come or whatever?" So I brought them all here. Well, that's, so the, that's the guy that was back in your dressing room. That was the guy that was my. So you're making the announcement when? We're making the announcement at midnight. But uh, tomorrow. We have to well, it's past midnight. I mean, I mean, technically uh, yeah, it's past I, midnight. We got these contest lawyers, and they're like, you know what I mean? No, technically it is past midnight. By the time anyone sees this, it is the next day. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Trouble. You really, if you, you want to bring really want me to, I Let's can bring I the guy out. Let's bring him up. Put on the camera back there. There he is. That's a hall camera. Get go, him. Go get him. Roberta, go get him. He's going to freak That's out. That's the guy there. So I walk out, and then when I went up on the stage, you know, there's the crowd. You feel like you're in a football game or something, and you get the adrenaline pumping. And I'm meeting Jay Leno, and there's Ben, and he's happy as can be. What do you think? It's the Tonight Show. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Now, it's Pete jo now, is Pete Jones the phony name you wrote on in case you didn't sell, or is that your real name? <laughs> yeah, that's the, uh, well, it's Peter Jones. Peter Jones. Yeah. Well, no one yeah. will know the difference. Right. Really. Mm -hmm. My are handle you, was Pete are Jones. Are you excited about this? It's, uh, it was a chance of a lifetime. Now, what is your script about? Can you my, tell us? My can script's you... about a uh, eight-year-old Irish Catholic boy, coincidentally named Pete. Right. And uh, <laughs> that was uh, pretty good on that one. Um, and a uh, seven-year-old Jewish boy. Okay. Peter, congratulations. We're going to follow this story as it goes along. Congratulations. Thank you. He was great. I mean, for the first time, boom, going up there, he did better than Matt Damon did the first time he was on the show. You know, uh, Matt just sweated the whole time. I was like, yeah. I wanted to prove to my mother-in-law that I could do it. And she was in the green room with my baby, and I could see in her eyes that she thought, you know what, I've been watching The Tonight Show for 40 years, and your mug was just on it. And that felt really good. It felt good, you know, I'm not saying I have made it, but I think I proved to her that maybe the three and a half years was worth it. I don't want this to be a frickin' one-time shot. I didn't just come here to win this thing and end it there. You know, I wanna make a movie and I wanna, I wanna make a career. I don't know if he'll become spoiled, I don't know if he'll become petulant, I don't know if he'll become jaded. Uh, he may be exactly the same and just a little bit more savvy and, and sophisticated. He may be kind of fooling us all now with a sort of aw shucks, folksy thing, you know. Pete Jones. Pete Jones. <laughs>